What's up everyone, in today's video I'm going to share with you the 5 different ways to share data between Angular's parent and child components. So let's stay with me and see you in a couple of seconds. Okay, here on the screen uh, I have WinSurf, uh, my IDE or code editor and you can use whatever you want, so uh, VS Code, Cursor or any others. And uh, here's the project that I generated for this uh, particular uh, tutorial here. So the, the project has an up Angular application generated by using Angular CLI, and uh, we have the five different ways uh, here. So the first way uh, that we want to uh, see here is actually uh, input properties. So using the input, uh, and we have a child component here, and we have a parent component here. So let me zoom the screen. Okay, uh, inside of the input child component, we're using signals actually, and we're just using an input signal here, and we're using that uh, name here and showing it in our uh, uh, component here, actually in the in the view of the component, and then in the input property parent here, uh, we're just calling that input property child and the providing the name here from the parent name that we actually have. So this one is just the simplest way, and we are just going to sh uh, to see that in action. So just let me open the uh, the screen, right? Okay, and this is the input properties. So this one has just uh, input properties. Uh, this is a title, and we have this hello Angular that we, uh, we created here. So uh, switching back to uh, to the code editor, we can see the Angular is name, and we just uh, pass the data from uh, parent to child component. So uh, what's going on with this one? So, uh, uh, when would you use this one? So, uh, when you need a one-way data flow from parent to child, or for passing simple values, objects, or even functions to a child component, or for more basic uh, parent to child communication. So, uh, what are advantages of this? It is really simple to implement and follows unidirectional data flow principles, and it reflects changes immediately. And also, uh, it has some limitations. So one of them is uh, it is just one way. So it is just communicating the parent to child components, and that's it. And child cannot directly update the parent values. So this is it for the first one. Now the second one, we have a uh, ng model. So this is a bit uh, a bit interesting uh, because uh, with this one we're able to to do uh, two way communication between the component. So we have an ng model child component. And let me open the child. So we're using model from sig uh, signal model here, and uh, we have a, like a, we have an import here, and we are using the uh, model uh, for this. And then uh, we're calling that model here in the our input field, for example. And we have text and ng model is value and uh, ng model change. Uh, we are setting the signal here, the event that we are getting from the input. So this is for our child component here, and. Uh, into our parent uh, component here, ng model parent. Uh, we have a model parent, and we have a, a ng model child, and we have uh, this uh, syntax called banana in a box, and where we are doing uh, a two way binding here. And we are showing the parent value when we init this, and after we change the parent value, uh, after we change the uh, child, we're going to update the parent value here. So this is one way, and uh, let me show you that. Okay, here. So we are on the ng model. And we have initial value here that is like this, and we can see it like this. And after I change that, I'm just say uh, change value, and we can see that uh, the value has been changed. So after we go, if we go back and if we just remove this here, these brackets, okay, it's say Then we have just unidirectional uh, data binding, so it is just uh, passing the data from parent to child again. So uh, we got the uh, we got the uh, when we open it. We got the initial value here, and we change that initial value to something else. So something is. Uh, we cannot uh, see the changes here actually, and it's not doing the two way binding as it did in the past. So, what's going on with this one? So, uh, I just explained how it works actually, and but uh, when you would use this one? So, uh, when you need the child to both read and update the parents' data. Uh, for form components that modify values, and also when implementing custom form controls. So advantages, provides two-way communications, works well with forms, and uh, keeps parent and child values in sync. So whatever uh, changes in the child component, I, it automatically reflects uh, on the parent component, as we could see in this example. So limitations, more complex than simple input, 
because we're just uh, going from the simple to complex ones and it can make data flow harder to track in layer larger applications actually and requires careful implementations to our uh, circular updates so uh, the next one that we're going to see is the view child decorator here so uh, let me open the uh, code editor here and the third one that i have here is the view child so in the view child child actually we're going here and we are uh, adding the message that is type of string and it's empty here and we have uh, we are adding a method here to update this message so uh, when we update the message then we get the message as a string and this message becomes a message okay that we got from here so in the, the uh, this template we have nothing here so it's just a message so this is just a recommendation from the from the uh Windsor. so just don't don't be uh, just just don't look at it <laughs> okay and then uh, into the parent component here uh, we have this uh, parent component uh, where we actually uh, implemented view child decorator so view child decorator works like like this we add a view child decorator we say that it is going from the view child component and it is child and then we are using here a null, a null, a non -null assertion actually and the view child component so we are using this because if we don't use it we're uh, complaining here, uh, types with complaining in Angular X, uh, because uh, this child has no initializer and is not def define, definitely assigned in the constructor. So if we add this exclamation mark, we say that uh, we certainly know that it will be uh, def defined there and we'll use it even if we are not using a constructor there. So ng after view init. So to avoid expression change after it has been checked error, uh, we're adding a set timeout here. So the set timeout uh, without anything, so without zero, just set timeout. And then we are updating this message uh, as initial. So this is just the example where we are updating it as initial value. And after that, uh, we, we, have an, uh, we have a method to send a child. And this child updates message with a new message from parent. And in the template part, we have a view child parent title here. We have a button that will click and send the child uh, the message. And we have a view child uh, component uh, below this. And we are just we have just called view child component. Uh, even we could call it like this. Okay. And hit save. And now when I open the browser here to see it, uh, we can see the view child here. And we are viewing child parent component here, view child child, and initial message from parent here. So send and we get the new message from parent so this is the third way to communicate between the chair uh, parent and child component so we just see input ng model and you child here so you child use decorator and it allows uh, parent component to directly access the child components properties and methods so um, when to use this one actually uh, when the parent needs to call methods on the child component so using this this way, we are able to run uh, methods inside of the child component but without uh, exposing them like uh, just uh, like outputs or, or any events. There, uh, also when you need the programmatic control over child components for complex component interactions like accessing the child's DOM or recalling its method, and that's it. So advantages provides direct access to component child's component API allows imperative style programming and they can simplify uh, certain uh, parent-child interactions. And it uh, has some uh, limitations as well. So create style coupling between the components. Child component must be available in the template. So if it's not available, we cannot do anything with it and must wait for ng after we need to safely uh, access the child. So this thing that I showed you there and it uh, can lead to uh, expression change after has been checked error if not implement careful so that's the thing that we uh, change uh, there and the next one uh, it's the one of the most commons uh, it's using a shared service here so let me close these i'll just save it okay close close okay uh, in the using shared service method uh, we're creating a data service here first and this data service is a signal actually for us as a type of string and we have initial value and the current data is this data source as read only and that's the current data and then we are using a method to update this uh, data source instead of just accessing and updating it from the components and this data source uh, says the new data here so this is data service uh, inside of the 
child component here, we're using the uh, two options. So we have two, uh, two ways of getting the data from the signal-based service. So the first one is uh, using the signal directly. So data service inject. And also the second one that I added here is uh, using a getter function. So the get data then return this data service current date. So it's the uh, child component here. And we have the uh, template part. We have a service child. We have a data service current data. And in the parent, we, uh, in here we just uh, show the data. So we have uh, shown the two ways. So the data as a, as a getter and data service like this one. So in the parent of this uh, using service method, uh, we have a, like a shared service parent. We have a button here, send data, update data, and also we can just update this. So just, okay. And inside of the component, we are using the, the service, injecting the service like data service and sending the data. So again, we are trying to send the data from parent to child. And also we could do this vice versa because uh, they are communicating uh, with a service so when we want we have some siblings sibling components and we want to com communicate with, between them we can use a service and so it doesn't matter where they are they are using the same service to communicate the update the service so uh this is the thing here and uh, let me just show you uh this example the browser so here uh, we're using shared service here and the shared service parent this is the parent component and this is a uh, button that will update the data so shared service child here and we have initial date initial value two times because uh, as you remember i showed you that that uh, we are using the let me show you that uh, the two uh, different ways in the child to access the data so the one is the data service uh, the current data directly and another one is just uh, using the getter to get the get the data from, from the uh, from the service so Going back to the browser, when I click update, both of these updates. So data from parent via service, data from parent via service. So that's it from the using share service. And the last one that uh, we're going to see here, or actually let me let me tell you more about this one. So uh, when to use, actually uh, when the components are not directly related, just as I mentioned. So when they are not just directly related, they are not just parent child, but they are siblings, you can use this one to communicate with each other. So it doesn't matter where they are in our applications. And uh, for sharing data across multiple components, so the multiple components can, uh, can uh, be succeed here to get the data. And also uh, when implementing a, a state management pattern, then you could use it like a state uh, in a signal state and you could uh, get them like this, get the data like this. So, and also for the coupling components while maintaining communication. Also, it has uh, advantages that is the couples components relationships uh, helps avoid prop drilling. So we are not passing the props, but that means like we are passing uh, properties from uh, the parent component to a child and from a child to another child to another child. So it goes like the prop drilling and uh, it allows many to many component communication. It can be persist beyond components life cycles. So limitations can be oracle for simple parent-child communication. So if you just have a parent-child component, uh, as you could see in the previous examples, you could use just the NG model or you could just uh, uh, use an inputs and that's it there. So uh, it could also uh, use like make data flow harder to check if overused. So these are some things to consider there. And the last one, as I mentioned, uh, we have a content projection. So this is something interesting. And in the content projection, we have uh, two components here as well. We have a, a child component that is uh, here, like a parent child uh, component projection, CP child component. That is actually a box component template, a box, and has a box header. And we have here ng content. So we are using ng content from Angular to uh, say like uh, these are templates where the contents should appear when we uh, add something there. So also from version 18, I believe, uh, if I am, if I'm, uh, remember correctly, uh, we have an option to add the default here as we added. So there's the default header, default body. If there is no provide the default uh, or anything there, we would uh, we will show this default header here. And uh, how is this actually working? So inside of the child component, we have nothing at all. So this is just like uh, like a templating things. And uh, in the parent component, uh, also we have just the titles here that we are going to show. And inside of the template part, we are calling just app 
uh, CP child here component. And here we are using just the uh, ng project as. So uh, in the child component, we, we said that this select here is actually telling that this uh, specific ng content is going to get the, that header. So for example, header as this. And also the body here is going to be like this uh, body. And then in the parent component, when calling this uh, app, uh, app child component, uh, actually uh, on the projection child component, we are telling that H2 here is acting as a header. So it is projecting as a header. And we are uh, passing the header title here. And also in the ch uh, ng projecting is body here as a contact that we got there. So how is this looking in action? Let me switch the uh, browser here. So content projection. And we have this uh, box title here uh, from parent. And this is content projected from the parent component. Uh, if we inspect this element here, let me see it. OK, if you can see it, uh, this is the uh, component. And we have a container here. So we can see the box header box. So the box header uh, has this thing here inside of it, like our title from the parent. And also the body uh, is getting uh, our uh, content projected from the parent component here, as you can see. So it is uh, adding the things at the proper space here, and we're uh, able to use it uh, as expected there. So uh, this is it for the uh, content projection. And uh, using the content projection, uh, and we are, as you can see, we are using content child and uh, ng content. So uh, want to use when building reusable container uh, components such as cards, panels, tabs. When a child component needs to wrap uh, or style content provided by the parent, and for complex layout components with multiple com content sections, and when building component libraries with customizable content, because we are able to customize this content here uh, from our parent components. So this is interesting there to mention. So advantages. It's highly reusable component. So if you're using uh, and creating reusable components, this is also uh, a thing to consider. If you're using uh, like uh, dummy components that are being just styled uh, uh, things with that. So it allows parents to determine with content while children control uh, layout styling and the current project, not just the text, but fully components with their own behaviors. And it enables creation of flexible component, uh, composable components. And also, it has some limitations as each of these that I mentioned. So more complex to implement for dynamic content and projecting uh, components with inputs requires careful handling and can be difficult to control a uh, project, uh, projected component lifecycle. So these are some things to consider. Okay, I think this is it for uh, this video. And uh, I hope the video was helpful to you and you enjoyed the content. If you like the video, please like, share or subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye.